Hello, hello. Hello, hello. So can you hear me? Yes. Yeah? Yep. But I can't, I, I still can't hear you. Hmm. Well, I could try to leave and come back. Let's see. Uh, let me see. Uh, did, did you enter via um, a computer audio? Yes. Okay, sure. I'm here. <laughs> the button. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. This is Night Flight. I'm Judith Koba, and today I have Masaki Miyagawa another wisdom warrior on the road <laughs> and i'm very happy to have him here his website is akaida.com mm -hmm. you can see that in the background how it is written everything will be linked below so masaki welcome to night flight hi judith and glad to be here <sighs> we made it <laughs> had some technical issues as usual so, Masaki, please, you can do that a lot better than I ever could. Tell us a little bit about yourself and especially about your interesting heritage and ancestors. Well, my name's Masaki Miyagawa, very Japanese name, but my family has been here in Los Angeles for uh, nearly 100 years. Okay. So I'm probably more Los Angeles American than a lot of like white people that came to LA. My, my family has been here basically the whole development of Los Angeles, you know, and, uh, my mother's side is Buddhist priest for 400 years. Uh, they were samurai before that. So a little unusual. And I grew up from the time I was, uh, an infant going to the Buddhist temple. Actually, when my mother was pregnant with me, she would be playing the gagaku. It's the imperial court music of Japan, which connects to China, but also Central Asia. Mm -hmm. And so uh, most people know me from, you know, the Orgon energy pyramids. But the interesting thing is uh, when the more I got into these energy tools, it would seem to be totally separate things. Buddhism, spiritual tradition, and orgone energy pyramids right mm -hmm. but actually there's uh there is a connection and so uh, on a day-to-day -day basis i deal with energy tools that help people with emf you know we also have like ten tensor rings these copper rings which actually germans celts vikings used to use these kind of tools mm -hmm. ancient technology yeah. but after you handle the the practical use of energy tools to help uh neutralize 5g signals wi-fi and so forth you start realizing that another word for energy or energetics or frequency is spirit right so this actually all comes around to spiritual traditions and you know i'm lucky enough to do this every day as my work you know yeah so how did you embark on this work i mean um well, it was probably not that you decided as a young uh man yeah oh, you don't I'm, going, <laughs> I'm going to mid I'm, I'm gonna be the pyramid man well yeah I, I think it was all probably uh predetermined at some karmic level but on a conscious level i had i had no concept I would be doing this work, but um, it was five years ago. Uh, I, I hadn't had a standard night we call nine to five standard day job 
for you know 10 plus years but i was doing odd jobs and these kinds of things and i was in a really tight spot so of course of course the answer if you're broke is not to look for a job but to make esoteric pyramids right that's what everybody <laughs> so i i had some uh of these they call organite or orgone pyramids mm -hmm. from organized africa which is uh it's a, he calls himself george but i think it's properly gay or because he's from originally from germany and he's an expat he lives in johannesburg but he's a long time uh pyramid maker i had some of his pyramids but i never thought to make them myself but somehow at that time i got the idea you know what I think I'm going to make these pyramids. So I started from zero. The information is online 101. I bought the materials and I made pyramids for every day for like five weeks. And from zero, not knowing anything, and then casting, cast, from, actually from the first time, this is a great thing about these pyramids. It's a combination of quartz crystal, plastic resin, and metal particles or metal shavings. And it actually has, uh, creates a field effect or a high energy that will give you better sleep. It will neutralize a lot of the harmful effects of uh, Wi-Fi and so forth. But I will also want to, it's also art. So that was my goal. I was making pieces that worked technically, but I like to balance the form and function, right? So from maybe about four, three, four weeks out, I was getting to this level and I was happy with it. Uh, so yeah. why did you decide to put them in the form of a pyramid? Well, uh, there's different kinds of shapes. I mean, you could just cast it into a cube or a lot of people have maybe have seen, they call Tower Buster. It's actually made in a muffin pan. It looks like a little hockey puck or muffin. Uh, but there is such a thing called shape power. So. Uh, if you have something in a cone shape or pyramid shape, it actually amplifies the energy. And the pyramid shape itself has an energy to it. So that's why uh, if a lot of people have a home hi-fi or stereo system, we know that there's speaker cones, right? It, it will amplify the sound waves. But what we're not told is energetically, if you put these materials in the energy orgone pyramid in a pyramid shape it's much more powerful than if it was say in a cube and people that are into esoteric they know uh, the cube shape is related to saturn which is a restriction energy and what do we live in in the modern world but squarish cube buildings and the, the worst shape to to live in is a metal cube which is basically what we live in right Mm. The circulation of the energy is, is very stagnant, but a lot of the old uh, architecture had a lot of domes. A lot of the churches have domes or they're a cone shape. A lot of the old Slavs and Celts, I'm sure even Germany, because yeah. uh, the German, the Teutonics, they're ex they have a lot of uh, the sax, you know, like Saxon or Buddha. He was from the Scythian or Sak tribe. It's a like Kosak. They had the a lot of uh, like a not dome, but what do you say? Funerary mounds. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a mound shape. And uh, you can go deep into this because I think you know if you're into esoteric, they're finding a lot of these old skeletons that have basically a cone head. And what's a cone head? But a pyramid on the back of your head, right? If you had a cone head or peaked skull, you would have extreme psychic power. So there's just a lot that you start getting into this is very interesting. It has a practical application, but it has a deep metaphysical esoteric uh, connection also. Mm -hmm. yes. um, what is the difference between a power pyramid that you do and the, let's say, regular ones? Okay. Well, uh, a basic uh, orgone pyramid or organite pyramid, uh, it's non-powered. So I would say it's a passive 
scalar generator or you know many terms for it there's the chi prana some people say odic like odin odic force uh it's like a life energy so it's a passive way to create these energies because as the wi-fi radio waves and so forth hit the pyramid it actually produces more uh positive etheric energy right but we have here this is probably maybe two and a half kilos <laughs> so uh if you could see here there's a coil inside yes uh, this is actually a rodan coil it's a torus or donut shaped coil yeah and when you have a powered coil it's much more intense the energy is much more because like I, i'm running 432 hertz right now i have a frequency generator so when the current goes through the coil uh it creates a cancellation effect like tesla called the zero point the standing wave uh some people the scalar field uh you know v victor schalberger with the water also uh torsion field russian is called torsion field it's kind of a spinning energy so this is a powered way to basically get the same energy as this non-power pyramid but it's much more intense much more powerful and you can pick the specific frequency you want because everything has a vibration or frequency so if you're doing meditation right we know chakra points have a frequency so 432 crown and so forth and anytime you have a high etheric energy it will boost any kind of energy work so if you're doing healing work if you have one of these power pyramids in the room, whether it's body work, acupuncture, uh, hands-on healing, it, it's basically almost like a carrier wave. It really boosts what you are already doing. Or even, uh, you know, so-called psychic or uh, manifestation work. Because the, the, the thing about these uh, etheric energies is it, it carries information. Mm -hmm. So it ex explains a lot of the so-called paranormal phenomena. So if you're doing manifestation work, basically that's the thought form or thought wave. So if you have a, already a high energetic potential in the room, high etheric energetic potential, then your manifestation is greatly boosted. Yes. Okay. I, I, I was so wrapped up in your explanation <laughs> that I lost my thought. Can you believe that? Um. <laughs> oh well let me let me uh because you know i i make my pyramids i i was making basically uh maybe half and half like basic pyramids and py powered pyramids until earlier this year now uh i am pretty much just focusing on powered pyramids and i have other tools like pendants and so forth but a lot of my clients find me through i have a loose association with a Rife machine. It's a yeah. frequency healing device, Spooky 2 Rife machine. And there's a company in England, uh, Burkana Labs. So this is a radionics board. So uh, can be used for home homeopathic use. Mm -hmm. But an interesting thing is uh, when you have a frequency generator going to the input, runs a current through the board, right? This output here can be connected to my pyramid and then it it's like a orgone cannon boosting that signal out you know so people like to chain or connect my pyramids with other devices too mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, let's say once i have that then mm -hmm. i just put it in the room or what do i do with that uh well i i kind of see two major uses one is more for personal meditation Mm -hmm. So, um, if you're within, see what's five or 10 feet. So if you're within like three meters, it's very strong. You know, it probably goes out to maybe seven to 10 meters. You would feel an effect, but if you're maybe within a few meters of the pyramid, the effect is very strong. So when you're meditating, uh, it to me it's not subtle anybody that does any kind of energy work or you've done some meditation reiki and so forth 
to me, it's not subtle. You get that um, if you've ever had hands on healing, mm -hmm. especially here, it's very sensitive, like third eye, you kind of mm -hmm. feel uh, a pressure or a heat. It's a similar sensation when the powered pyramid is turned on. So you could use it for that, for meditation. You could use it for a vivid dream, boosted dream, because it's like your energetic level while you're sleeping. If you have, e even some people that are sensitive, a non-powered pyramid, they will have an effect. But when you have a powered pyramid, uh, especially if you're running it night after night, I don't recommend running it all day. You're going to start going to the moon. But, you know, <laughs> say, say dream session, uh, mm -hmm. if you do like half day run, basically, the the dreams become much more vivid and the dream recall is is longer you know you know how you usually wake up and you forget you have more dream recall but it's because it's like your your etheric vibration is being ramped up and boosted up um and then there's sort of like the the more i guess homeopathic use like i was saying people combine it with uh uh you know, sending homeopathic frequencies, uh, you know, here, here in us, I don't talk about, I mean, I do talk about, Oh, you can do these kinds of things, but I don't get too specific because it's very restricted here right now. You know, okay. People, people that have the eye and they know these other devices, they can figure it out, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what, what about intent? Well, intent, is uh has to do with manifestation you know mm -hmm. and some people uh they say well i you know it depends on your ideological background some people are very um maybe traditional religious based maybe christian ideology they may mm -hmm. be coming out of islam or something so well, i don't know about that but what they don't realize is every day even without any device you are manifesting anyway because the human body, even on the above board medical side, it's just known that the heart center, the heart, it's like an electromagnetic power center, right? But the heart center also is, uh, produces these uh, kind of scalar waves, which is, again, this is the etheric energy. It's the, mainly here, not in the head, not in your physical head. The heart center, like the Egyptians, when they did the mummification, they pretty much threw the brain out, but they would keep the heart in these coptic jars, right? The funerary jars. Why? Because they knew the heart center is actually very important. And for human beings, it's very important too. This is, this is what separates us from machines or AI. We have a heart center. And the, the stronger your heart center, the, the more that you can manifest, right? So you're manifesting. If, that's what I tell people too, because some of my... Power pyramid. I mean, you could look at this. It's technical, but this is a work of art also. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes it's not cheap for the average person. But what I tell people is you don't need necessarily to buy my products. The, the more important understanding is it's already in you. You have the power of manifestation in you, but you don't need a car either, or you don't need a bicycle or a skateboard. It's just... Uh, sort of like leverage it can make it happen faster or give you a boost you know so um, it's just levels you know even if you wear an energy pendant like I I wear a tensor ring pendant pretty much 24-7 uh, now except when I'm showering even if you wear something as small as is, this is it, that copper it's copper this mm -hmm. is based on um, there's different sacred cubits it was the measuring lengths in the megalithic structures like pyramids and so forth but what's interesting is i mean same thing i have this ring for electrical meter like smart meter right do you put it around just, that uh you could put this on the the plastic hood of the meter okay. or inside if it's a house you could put it in the the electrical circuit box okay and then close the door but this is just copper that comes from the hardware store right but the key is the length it's cut to and basically if you say have a length of wire right you cut it that wire is like a tuning fork it's vibrating at a certain frequency if it's cut to these uh specific lengths they used in the ancient times which tells you they were highly aware of energetics 
right? People think just because it's stone, it's more crude. Actually, it's more advanced. Our society today has the appearance of being very modern or futuristic, but it's actually very crude because e even um, structures today, how long are they going to last? A hundred years, something like that. If it's made of stone, it lasts for thousands of years, tens of thousands of years. Mm -hmm. So you, you cut the wire to a length of a sacred geometry, right? If you connect it and solder it in a loop like this, one side is positive and one side is negative. But if you introduce this twist, which is that cancellation, it has no polarity. Both sides are positive. It's a very simple tool. And you know, this is, this was rediscovered in the nineties by a man, American Slim Sperling. Uh, but actually if you look in museums, archeologists know that say Celts, uh, Nordics, the Europeans, they had a lot of these tools. Like some of the Vikings had like, tor they call it, I think torque is a C shaped arm clamp, uh, various jewelry. It looks exactly like this, but most archeologists are not aware of energetics. So they've never thought to measure the diameter, the dimensions of what these things were cut to. But it doesn't matter because nowadays it's, it's coming back. And this is very simple, but it's just the understanding of the energetics, you know? So many of these are cut to pyramid uh, dimensions and so forth. Mm -hmm. So in other words, are we dealing with a frequency modulation there? Yeah, uh, certain qubits have a specific frequency, but uh, there are others like this, they call the uh, Teotihuacan or harmony and balance qubit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a specific frequency, so, supposedly. It, it kind of will find the frequency you need. This sounds kind of flaky, but mm -hmm. I, uh, I just refer to the top people in the field, like people in the US might know Brian Besco from Twisted Sage. He's like the top for tensor tools. But this movement has spread just like the pyramids and so forth. It's, it's kind of a DIY movement. So um, that's a great thing. You know, you can buy them from people or you can try making yourself from instructions online. And yes, certain ones like say the, the Royal Egyptian qubit, I believe is 144 megahertz and so forth. But some of them don't relate to a specific frequency, but you could just say in general, you know, try some of these out. Even, you know, even though this is like specifically for a smart meter, if you were to put this under your pillow and sleep, you would have a similar effect if you had a powerful orgone pyramid on your bed stand, you know? So to me, I've tried many of these tools and I get a very similar sensation or feeling no matter how the energy is produced. It's, there's all kind of like a high etheric energy, which cancels out the chaotic signals or chaotic component of the digital electronic, electronic um, signals that are around us today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good to know. Because with 5G, it will get even crazier. Well, I would say this. Uh, I think everybody has a pair of sneakers or shoes, right? Mm. You wanna get around, you'll have that. I think going into the future, the people that are aware and conscious, it's just a fact you should probably have some sort of energy tools to maintain a balanced lifestyle. And many of these things, they're not that expensive, you know, mm. like, it's like 30 US or something. Yeah. And it basically lasts indefinitely. Yeah. But that, that's the thing. It's just actually the understanding is the most important part, not the monetary factor. Mm. Yeah. So I understand you also do readings, yeah? Mm-hmm. I'm a pretty strong intuitive, but uh, publicly I do numerology readings, which is the study, mm. esoteric study of numbers. Yeah. So when I do a reading, it's probably 90% off of just the calculation, but I do use intuition yeah. to connect the dots. 
you know, I think anybody that starts working with these tools seriously, uh, it will boost the skills you already have. And I would say all humans actually have the skill. It's like a muscle. Mm -hmm. So some people, I would say probably I was naturally very intuitive, but it's like a muscle. So the more that you use it, the stronger it gets. And I would compare it to this like athletics, right? There are some people that are naturally strong athletes or like runners. One person will naturally be able to run without any training faster than another. But if the average person is dedicated and trains, they can uh, outpace or they can be more powerful than the natural intuitive that never uh, practices. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. I have another question concerning the uh, pyramids. Would it be possible for me to, let's say, I want to order a tailor-made one for me, for my purposes? Would, could you do something like I, that? I have, I basically use um, like a template, you know, like say if it was like a powered pyramid like this. <laughs> it would basically be the same form, but maybe the color is different or the quartz is, say, you wanted very uh, third eye psychic boost, then maybe we would use amethyst, which mm -hmm. is purple, because third eye is basically connected to amethyst, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe the body would be purple. Mm -hmm. So I do do some custom requests like that, but I don't deviate too far to do a totally different shape. I have certain styles, I would say, you know, and that's mainly uh, because I'm a kind of a perfectionist. I don't know if it's... <laughs> The Japanese thing, but yeah, and if I do it, if I do it, it's gonna, be, thing, yeah. it's gonna be like a hundred percent, you know, oh. it's gonna be very perfected. So if I say yes, I will do it, then I have to do it my best. Hmm. And uh, due to time constraints and everything, it's easier for me to just to just slightly change styles that I've already done many times, you know. Yeah. Okay. So shifting gears. <laughs> Um, we are now transitioning from mutable water to fixed air. Oh, yeah. 20, 2020 is going to be a big year. <laughs> yeah. So and what I mean by that is shifting out of Pisces and into Aquarius. Aquarius yep. So uh, mutable water was quite interesting. And what do you think we are going to see with fixed air? I mean, fixed fixed signs are like Scorpio and so forth, but they, they are usually regarded as stabilizers. Well, I would say that personal responsibility okay. and also be careful what you ask for. <laughs> because the whole thing is opening up, right? The the yeah. thing with the age of Pisces was um, maybe too many rules. People were complaining, oh, the church is, you has the boot on your neck. You can do this, don't do that. The mm -hmm. so-called patriarchal father, you know, mm -hmm. telling you what to do. Well, now age of Aquarius, no rules. <laughs> the box is completely open. It's Age of Pisces is I believe. Age of Aquarius, I know. I know. Mm -hmm. But then you cannot complain about people trying. Well, there will, be, there will be some control factor that's more hidden. But basically, you have much more option and opportunity, just, just like with these you know, energy tools and so forth, to basically be the magician yourself. But then do you have the wisdom to know what you're doing? You know, you could do anything, but do you know the karmic framework? Do you know the spiritual framework ramifications. Of, of ramifications of what you're doing? And this is what happened in the past cycles. They basically blew the planet up because in the decline of the <laughs> civilizations like Atlantis, they had unlimited power. But when you become corrupted, then you could blow up the planet too. So, uh, I, I see this a lot in LA, in Los Angeles, which has always been, you know, crystal people and hippies and so forth, you know. The, the California kind of has an Aquarian energy to it. 
but there's many people that I see that it's part of the learning process. Maybe it's the first time in this life they're coming to this information or in so-called other timelines, past lives, they've never done this kind of work. Mm. So they're getting into areas that could have some serious blowback, but I think that's just so-called baked in the cake. It's just what's going to happen. It, it, you know, I DJed for many years, involved the music, and it's a similar thing. Now, because of the technology, before you had to buy the vinyl records, you had to invest a lot of time and energy and have a deep investment to, even as a hobby, to do DJing. But mm -hmm. now you could basically DJ off your smartphone, right? <laughs> so it's much like the access is expanded unlimited, but because so many people are now have the access, the quality has dropped, right? It's the same thing with the metaphysics and so-called magic. I see a lot of people getting into it and I'm like this, like, okay, <laughs> I, 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 I hope you guys are, you know, do the right, so-called right thing. There is no real right and wrong in the longer in the bigger view it's all learning but you could get in serious trouble i think if you don't know you know the repercussions like you're saying but this is all part of the acquiring age you know mm. yeah. uh, before we started recording you said something very interesting about the us 2020 oh, yes. 2014 in europe can you elaborate a little bit on that sure um my primary esoteric you know system i use is numerology mm -hmm. um, but i have a uh, working knowledge of astrology and feng shui and so forth mm -hmm. so basically from here until 2026 major shifts but what's interesting especially you know you coming from germany is uh in cycle work uh, especially in feng shui the U.S. or America is one cycle behind uh, Western Europe. So what you guys have been going through, say from, you know, 2014, mm -hmm. I, I forget when Merkel opened the gates, but 50. the, the mm -hmm. huge migration wave, now this program is happening here. And we've always had, I mean, we probably have, you know, 30 million so-called illegals in the u.s but it's different now we've never had waves of five ten thousand people and waves coming to the border and we have africans from congo and other places coming uh by plane they're arriving in latin america and then coming up this has never happened before in numbers like it's happening now uh so i think obviously people that have been following it know that it's created a great disruption in Europe. Uh, and we are going to have some kind of similar crisis here. Uh, and, you know, I think that 2020 will be not just a time of global kind of uranium disruption, <laughs> revolution. Right. Change. Disruption. I love that. Uh, but specifically in the U.S., this is the election year. Mm. So I really expect riots, you know, mm. riots by the end of next year. Uh, if you look at in the numerological view, 2020, right? Two and two is four. Mm. Four in the Chaldean numerology, because uh, you can connect to planets and so forth. Four is Aquarius Uranus energy. So what does that tell you? Uh, you're going to see a lot of strange, <laughs> unusual <laughs> things happen next year. I think people already, I see it here. People are looking more and more odd. The fashions, the habits, people freaking out is becoming more common. Uh, but then also what is, you know, Aquarian energy It's the revolution. It's the rebel, right? It's mm -hmm. overturning and Trump, although he's a Gemini, has a lot of uranian energy that's why he sends out one tweet and everybody freaks <laughs> out right so 2020 the year of disruption and then interesting right we go into the saturn pluto conjunction in january 12th i believe it's in capricorn uh just a few months out right straight after christmas 
But then at the end of 2020, we go into Saturn and Aquarius, and it's the 2020 year. Now, the traditional calculation of, you know, the year count, 2022 and two is four. But into my eye, I also see 22. Yeah. Okay, so 22 is a so-called master number. And uh, it's, it's an aspect of 11, right? The psychic channel connecting heaven and earth. So dimensional connection, you know, it's very heavy for the 2020. So there's going to be, you could say spiritual elements happening. And I think 2020, because of the, the, the Saturn Pluto conjunction and that Capricornian energy, I think it's going to be a peak of open Satanism. <laughs> <laughs> uh also 22 they call control or be controlled mm -hmm. so it's on you really to not be subject and passive to what's happening but to actively start doing things and it could be just as simple as using energy tools you say mm -hmm. i am sovereign this is free will so i do not agree to you imposing and encroaching on my space I'm a sovereign being and I'm not only protecting myself, but it's a natural side benefit that when you start using these tools, your mentation and your frequency and your understanding is actually bumped up because I look at where I was five years ago mm -hmm. and then I started making these and then how the hell am I making these though? I don't even know, <laughs> but it, it has to be a side effect of being around these 24 seven. And then 22, uh, the numbers 11, 22, and 33 are called so-called master numbers, probably because of Freemasonry, because they're highly interested in these specific numbers. But 22, they call the master builder. It's best, basically almost like master mason, where uh, a very large project can be built. You know, it, it probably not even in a few months, or a few years, it could be like a 10 year or something project. But again, this is not um, the traditional calculation of 2020 because it would just be four. But to my eye, you literally see like 22, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that some, something is going to start next year that is a major movement. And it could be in the positive sense that people start shifting in some ways and maybe starting their own personal projects could be social groups with that Aquarian energy forming. But of course, people that are into, you know, the news items and watching shows like yours, no, there's this agenda 2030, yeah. the, the whole green agenda, the social engineering, but especially I would say probably um, maybe the cashless society because the Saturn Pluto conjunction January 12th, I believe, uh, 2020 in Capricorn. That's probably when the global financial crisis, financial reset will start. So you combine that with the Uranus and Taurus transit that runs till 2026. You know, Uranus is overturning revolution, right? Taurus could be economy. So that would probably mean the entry of the cashless system cryptocurrency and so forth, which will probably start next year. So I, I think 2020 is a significant year. Uh, and as far as US, but I would say probably the West in general, 2024 is a big demarcation. And I think mm -hmm. the so we'll still be here, but the so-called end of the West as we know it is probably 2024, which is not that far off. You know, and then 2024 to 2044 is the last cycle in feng shui. It's a 180 year cycle. Mm -hmm. And then e every 20 years, the prosperity direction switches. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's Northeast, which is, it rules China. And look what China's been doing, the you know, they rose, right? Mm -hmm. Extra so called chi flow prosperity. Well, 2024 to 2044, you flip global south. That's the new prosperity direction. So places that are more tropical, that's probably the, basically the areas that are, you know, traditionally haven't done that well. Maybe parts of Africa, Latin America, 
some tropical resort islands and things like that, that might be, if it fits you, that might be a place to look. I, I think Northern Hemisphere, especially the traditional so-called first world countries, mm. are not really a place to be. Mm. Yeah. Even in prophecy, you know, uh, North America and Western Europe do not do well in this time. Mm. Yes. <clears throat> time to move south. <laughs> well, you know, every, everything like the Buddha said, you know, the only constants, constant is impermanence. And we kind of had our yeah. time. Yeah. We've had our time. And now it's the big shift, you know. Mm. I have practiced Tibetan Buddhism for a couple of years. Well, you know, it's all connected. You would be surprised. <laughs> People think all these religions are separated, but the more that I've looked into things, and my, you know, I come from a priest line. Mm. So I have uh, my grandfather and two of my uncles who were not only Buddhist priests, but Buddhist scholars. And I ask them certain questions and they don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, <laughs> because... Because the, the, now we're in the internet age and more information is coming and mm. connecting to the kind of far esoteric, you know? Uh, and there's scholarship to indicate that the Buddha, he, you know, most, most sources will say, you know, India. Mm. But uh, there's a strong connection to Persia. And we know that in the far past that, you know, Persia had a strong... I don't know what the word is, like kind of Nordic element, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, with the uh, kind of like old Slavs, the, the <laughs> Scythians, the, the Sak tribe, because Buddha, his title was Sakamuni or Shakyamuni, Shakyamuni yeah. Buddha, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. but th this is actually all documented. Even they say that he was an Aryan prince. He had the blue eyes, right? Maybe his skin was very tanned and he had kinky hair, but he definitely had blue eyes. That's what they say. Hmm. So he was from the Sak tribe or the Saka tribe, right? Well, what's even that area of pa what's now Pakistan, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. they have blue, the light colored eyes to this day, right? It was called Sakastan at that time. And he was from the Scythian tribe, which hmm. is kind of like a Southern Slav. But this Sak is the same as like Kosak, right? Or they call, have Kazakhstan, or they have Saxon, like the Anglo-Saxons or the Saxony in Germany, right? This, these are actually all connected peoples. But uh, it's kind of uh, not really folk. It's actually all out in the open. It's all documented, but people have not connected the dots. And, mm -hmm. um, you know... A common thing with the Scythians, or some say the Skiffs or Skiffians, they're basically Slavics, you know, they have that peak tat. This is some people from the Christian perspective, they call the, the Israelite caps, you know, or the French had the Marianne with the Liberty cap. Mm. The Smurfs have the, the, this kind of peaked cap is a sign of magical people, you know, and like we were saying before, I think in the far past, if you took that cap on, some of these, especially the noble class, would actually have cone heads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You already mentioned a little bit the craziness that is uh, going on and some people really freaking out. Mm. Well, I, I, think, I think most people, they're running on pure impulse. They're not that self-aware. Mm -hmm. So the more- Fight or flight? All well, the time, twenty four seven. The the more kind of like an autopilot you are, you're not self aware. Hmm. The more these astrological shifts and the energies will just move you around. You know. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, what do you make of the idea that the real magic is healing our ourselves? I think that the true answers are always within, mm -hmm. you know, uh, especially uh, the Western culture, everything is externalized, Yeah, you know, and people say, I'm, well, I notice this a lot. Um, 
especially with activists, <laughs> they have they have an honest um, want or intention to heal the world to do these things. But if you know them, they're externalizing their own issues yeah. to the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying don't try to help people or be proactive, but if you're going to do these things, at least at the same time, simultaneously work on yourself, you mm -hmm. know, uh, because again, the holographic universe, right? What's in you is mirrored in the outside. So, uh, and personally, I think it's actually more powerful to do your internal work. And, you know, typically Westerners, they value the exterior a lot. Um, so even in like uh, the MMA, very popular now, right? The BBJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's like, a, oh, wow, look at that guy. He's very built and muscular, right? Mm. But some of these guys, you can just push them over. And you look at the traditional martial arts masters in Asia, a lot of times they'll be toned, but some of these guys, they may even have a pot belly, but the internal chi force is incredible. You're looking at this guy, you know, uh, maybe a middle-aged middle guy or 50 years old master. Mm. He may not look like physically ripped, but the the chi, this, I guess you could call it the energetic or spiritual force is very strong. Maybe the best is to have a, a, a medium or in between, but especially the time we're moving in. I mean, already you guys have been dealing with it for a number of years, the crisis, mm. but there's a great, I think we're about to hit another level and you, it would be beneficial to be as balanced as you can, to have your energy balanced as you can, to be the eye in the storm. So even if a, if a chaos is hitting, you yourself are balanced and you can be an island of stability for your friends and family. Yeah. And, you know, uh, for the past decades in the West, it's been relatively stable, but, you know, there's been many cases in other countries where the people had almost nothing but they did have conviction and the will to survive. And this is something that I think we in the West should be conscious of that it's not, cause you know, here uh, in America, there's a lot of people that are the preppers, right? They yeah. have like six years of dried food and <laughs> guns and ammo. But the real question is, are you, do you have that inside, yeah. you know? Yeah, because I can tell you, you can you can prepare all you want, but yeah. you can literally die outside on a cold night if you think it's over, because you exactly. lost the will to survive. Yeah, you know? at the yeah. end of the day, if you are not mentally and spiritually <laughs> really prepared, yep, th this is it. It doesn't matter how many yeah. food you. It does not matter how much food you have. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not saying do not prepare. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and this, is, this plays into the Aquarian age too, right? Hmm. Uh, it's moving towards where it's the mental game. Hmm. Uh, it's not so much. I don't think we're going to have as many conflicts or wars in the way we used to, where there's an obvious guy coming over the hill with a gun. And okay, that's the enemy. Now it's very coded and it's multi-layered, just just like what you guys are dealing with. And you know, I think actually in general, all people they just want a better life. But what are the hidden agendas between the mass migration that never happened before? Even in the US, where we have tens of millions of so-called illegals, the pattern that ha that's happening now, it's different. It's different. And of course, you probably know, but the people, which is probably the uh, big majority of the population that don't have the eye to see, they never had the interest. They probably read the headline, but they don't even read the whole story. Mm. They're only seeing the surface level of what's happening. Mm. 
but that's where they get you because now we're in the realm because Aquarius, even the sign of Uranus, right? It almost looks like it has an antenna array. It's, it's about the invisible signals. So you, it, it's very beneficial to have the second sight because mm -hmm. what comes out of somebody's mouth, that's not the real message. If you could look at them and say, oh, this guy's aura is black or you just get a bad feeling, that's mm -hmm. what you follow, not what's coming above board out of the mouth. Yeah. So uh, in the positive sense, you know, Age of Aquarius, it's about, you know, frequency because air sign, literally like the sign of Aquarius almost looks like a Wi-Fi symbol, right? It's like mm -hmm. waves. So uh, we have tools now like Oregon Pyramid. We have tensor ring, so forth. So or like, you know, we have one here. Rife machine. This little generator can literally solve a lot of your problems. <laughs> but, and a lot of these things were actually known 100 years ago. It's just that it's coming more and more out into the public. This is working the frequency, working the energies in a positive way. On the other side, you have 5G, you have uh, frequency modulation that's going to mess with your mental thoughts and those kinds of things. But it's an open playing field, and you guys wanted it. You guys wanted freedom. You wanted the access to the information. So you have the free will now. It's your choice. It's the public. It's each person's choice. Are you going to just be passive and let things happen to you? Or are you going to be proactive and actually benefit? And I find it very fun to work with these tools. And I think even small children, you know, they have, uh, they make the sand, sand castles or make little pyramids. I mean, Certain things are so encoded in our psyche, in our genetic memory, that your eye is drawn to certain things, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. A question that I get is, how does one go about healing themselves? I mean, Mm -hmm. Healing ourselves on a physical level, that is a concept that surely is more and more popular. But the spiritual healing, the mental healing, so what would you suggest how to go about it? Because I guess we all have a lot of pain, trauma. Yes. Especially people like us, we have a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the normies, the normal people, they're dealing with survival level. And mm -hmm. those of us in the metaphysical thinking, or if you've ever looked deep into it, well, we're dealing with a lot. We're dealing with psychic people problems, right? Mm. So uh, I would say first, just start with basic energetic hygiene, which would start mm -hmm. with meditation. And then there's many schools, but a lot of people are familiar with like Reiki and so forth. But basically, mm -hmm. energetic, oh, first grounding, which is connecting your energy to the earth, Mother Earth, right? Mm -hmm. Just, even electrical equipment like the, the home stereo system, a lot of times it'll have a ground, right? Mm -hmm. Grounds the signal. So uh, you can do this through visualization, right? Mm -hmm. Next, clean flow. Just like in Chinese medicine, you visualize a clean circulation of energy. And this relates directly to the, the orgone principles, right? In the environment also clean flow, but in yourself, clean flow of energy. Then the cleaning of your energy or the so-called chakra cleaning. You start doing this long enough, uh, a lot of times you'll start getting mental images. You know, first when you're cleaning, say like uh, an area or a chakra point, right? The, it's very simple, the difference. Is it darker, heavier, kind of stuck, very stagnant energy, or is it cleaner? And basically through visualization, mm. you, as you visualize, simultaneously the energy is shifting. So if you can visualize cleaning and it gets lighter, um, you know, brighter, then you're actually cleaning it at the same time. But a lot of times when you do this enough, there's actually kind of like uh, energetic blocks mm -hmm. that are in your field. So you might have a, an, an image of 
uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Okay. When I was, I, I took a year long class like 10 plus years ago. And just as homework, we had to work on people hands on healing. Mm -hmm. So I was working on a guy and I got around to his elbow area. This wasn't really a trauma, but it was a repetitive action that was energetically stuck in the area. So I passed my hand over the arm and I was thinking baseball. I was getting baseball images in my mind's eye. Mm. And I asked him, did you ever play baseball? And he said, yeah. And then he asked me, what color is the uniform? And I'm just asked myself, okay, what, what color? And in my mind, I'm thinking it's white with the red, we call pinstripes, the red, mm. red lines. And he says, that's the uniform we used to wear in high school. <laughs> I went, because <laughs> this is the first time I got these images. We call mm. it pictures, right? Mm. But similarly, if you had traumas, these kinds of things, it can be stuck in your field. And it's actually blocking uh, a healthy flow. You know, mm. A lot of times it will be in the gut area because second chakra is emotional. Yeah. Um, so that can happen in this life. But then I think you know, there can be things in your field that are stuck from so-called other timelines or so-called past lives. Oh, yes. <laughs> so then you're going to know, oh, okay, now we're getting to the deep stuff because I can tell you, uh, it took me maybe, uh, and I was, you have to think, I was doing this consistently for one year. It took me one full year to just start seeing my stuff, mm. you know, start seeing my deeper issues, which are, you know, some happened in this lifetime, but some were definitely patterns or were influences from so-called other incarnations, which, you know, you start talking about this to the average person, they're like, okay, this guy is crazy. But guess what? <laughs> the universe, the matrix we live in is crazy. So, and I, I think also, uh, we were sent by the universe, the crazy ones. <laughs> I, I think also, uh, the thing is, is, is there a consistency or a logic to the things you're picking up? And if there is a logic, I think that's another proof that, that it's legitimate because that, that, this is, this is another thing. The more that you get, you know, I would say first, just practical, practical use. If you start using these energy tools, you're going to benefit. But the more that you get into energetic work, you have to trust yourself because yeah. There's nobody that can tell you, yes, you're okay. You can do dowsing, the muscle test, whatever. But, you know, in general, especially with psychic reading, and if you're doing this energetic cleaning, in point of fact, you are doing psychic work. You just don't realize it, right? The more in tune you get and you use the second sight, the more that you start trusting your internal compass, right? Because you have to know, okay. Is it, is it dirty or is it clean? That's simple, right? Then you work yeah, on yourself. Yeah, nobody can tell you that. Mm. But now you flip it external. And because if you're perceiving just energy state, right? Is it high or low? Is it clean or dirty? Then all you do is you flip it around. You can start looking at other people. It's the exact same. And now you're doing psychic reading. And it could be as simple. I think everybody has the, we call gut reaction or the initial feeling. Mm. I like this guy. I don't, there's something wrong, right? Yeah. yeah. You should trust that. And if you get to more detail, then you could start getting to specifics of reading people. But I think where this really comes in key is, or a, a, a important factor is in the age of Aquarius, especially you might've seen these deep fakes. It's becoming yeah. more and more, well, you will not be able to tell just from a photograph or video, or, you know, we're entering like a virtual reality, but we're already in a matrix and now we're in a matrix in a matrix, right? right? So you will not be able to tell on the surface level what is real and not real, even with the genders and so forth, right? Especially mm -hmm. Uranus and Taurus. It's like Uranus is the revolution, the transformation. Taurus could be the literal body, right? It's hard to tell these days, is it a man or a woman? 
right? <laughs> it's like nep, nep, especially we have Uranus and Taurus till 2026 and then Neptune and Pisces. Neptune and Pisces is all illusion, right? So y you can't really tell on the, and this is what's happening to the public. They're going on sort of a 1960s narrative, which is like 50 plus years ago. We are far past that now. But if you have the intuition, you could read just below the surface. And say, okay, I know what's going on, you know. And then uh, I don't, I don't know if it's going to get to this level. But let's say the the preppers' apocalyptic, you know, vision of the future, right? Let's say the grid goes down. We don't have internet. There's no electricity. Well, you know, the like the Native American trackers, the Indians here. They not only have the skill to see where the animals were or whatever, but say that you have two choices. Uh, we go east or west, right? And they go, we're, let's go west. Yeah, many you, do not know yeah. where that is without their GPS. <laughs> yeah, it's the internal, it's, it's the God GPS, it's the spirit <laughs> GPS, you know? And this is what AI cannot c control. They mm. cannot control the psychic being, you know? Yeah. So... I would say that another thing that is important is to take care of our thoughts and emotions. Because if we, we do not control it, what is going on there, somebody yeah. else will. Well, I think uh, it's important to be at a certain level, so-called non-reactive, mm -hmm. and be balanced, right? Mm -hmm. So um, even, you know, I'm not a Trumper. And Trump is highly uh, <laughs> abrasive, right? Mm. But I, I look at him and I find it, you know, I don't know if this is going to make people mad. I find him humorous because I know <laughs> he's such a cartoon. He's not even a president or a human being. He's a cartoon. He's like God-given archetype. He's supposed to be there. Mm. This whole process of the, the deconstruction of U.S. and maybe even the West. Mm. Nobody else could have done that. He is like a cartoon that was put there. And if you don't understand that, you're getting mad for no reason. And you're burning up a lot of energy that could be used in another way. I would say it's, it's much more important now for people to, to work on themselves and to be prepared rather than worrying about some of these larger political things that are probably all orchestrated anyway, you know? Maybe on, maybe on the local level you can do something, but some of these greater things, this is like the turn of the seasons, you know? So you just, for us in the U.S., I think the winter is coming, so you better get prepared. Mm. Yeah. Did you have interactions with astral beings? Uh, you know, not so much, but I have seen... Um, well, you know, I'm Scorpio, Scorpio, mm -hmm. sun, Taurus rising. So, mm -hmm. you know, Tar, you know, Scorpio. Where, where's your moon? Uh, I think I have that check. I think I have a Libra moon, I think. But Me too. Uh, my, my moon is in Libra and I'm a Sagittarius and ascendant is uh, Aries. So, so, you know, like Taurus, basically earth metals, right? Mm -hmm. Crystals. So that helps me there. Uh, but I think m it might be my Scorpio influence that I saw, I saw a lot of dark things. Uh, and, you know, I basically was literally in the underworld for many years because nightlife, right? Mm. Yeah, you see a lot of things there. And then <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't want to be too negative, but it's just a fact that among the so-called, I'm not a new ager, but a lot of people consider this, a lot of the whole new age sphere the holistic fairs, the people doing this kind of work, my eye is always drawn to the more negative people because to me, you don't have to worry about the people that are doing the good work. I'm more worried about, or I'm more, my eyes drawn to like, watch out for the, this guy or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's basically the, like we were, like we opened up with, the field is opening up, but a lot of people, they're like newborns, and they're very excited about the opportunities and the new information. But I like to say the spiritual streets are no different than the streets out in the big city. So you just have to be aware of that. And some of us that um, can perceive these things, I don't see it with my visual eye, but I can very much read the 
subtle energy, right? And some of these people out there, like especially even the on the talk circuit, esoteric talk circuit, because mm. I used to do inter- I used to conduct interviews too, mm. and then later I'll be like, wow, this guy's really weird. <laughs> he has <laughs> he has strange stuff going on, you know. Mm. Uh, so I've seen a lot of that. As far as messages, I I mainly just get um, just like a read like a read of things, you know. Mm. Uh, the only time I think that I really got a significant, I'm not one of those people like I had the vision, whatever, but let me tell you to set the parameters of my, my power pyramid, right? I ran it, which I do not suggest people do, but I ran it 24 Mm seven for about a week. And let me tell you the dreams I was getting were like prophetic, like off the charts, like Mm -hmm. so vivid and, it wasn't told to me in words, but through the message of the dream, I got a message. So that, that happened to me. And it was so intense though, that I haven't done that in maybe four years. I just use it for regular use. You know, I'm not trying mm-hmm. to get like the download or something like that. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, because yeah. In the, in, I have my problems with downloads. It can be overwhelming. And I, not I, for, only that, but who is sending the download? Well, right. I mean, for me, for me, I always just uh, connect to so-called my own intuition or higher soul, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. And this is another thing too. Okay, so we were talking about how age of Aquarius, everything's opening up, and a lot of people are so three D based. Mm. That they're just impressed when they see some so-called higher dimensional things happening. So maybe they're playing with a scrying board or a a Ouija board, right? Mm. And they're going like this and they're like, oh, look, it's moving. It's moving. (laughs) In my mind, I'm thinking you just opened a portal. I know it's moving, but they don't, they're just impressed that they're getting contact, but they have no sense. Is that, you know, what repercussion does that have? You know, so um and there's you know a lot of things similar to that um my personal view is it's much better to just do your own working do not con well we are so-called spirits in a physical body right Mm -hmm. so why are you going to go through a middleman to do what you want to do exactly or uh there are I guess how you say cultural or traditional um, religions, especially the African religions, right? I went back and forth between Brazil for like 10 years. So, Mm. you know, there they have Umbanda, Candomble, Mm. and some other Spanish speaking countries they call Santeria, right? Where they literally channel spirits Mm. and they just do it because that's how it's always been done. I never suggest doing that because you're already a spirit with a, with a connection that if you train, you can get your own answer. Mm. So why are you going to get, like, if it's a car, you get out of the driver's seat, something else comes in. And then when you come back, you have to readdress the seat. You have to readjust the mirror. <laughs> it, it's, it's very backwards to me, but because it's something maybe exciting something unusual and it does work it does work when you do some of these things the the, these these entities or spirits they will tell you legitimate information but a lot of them are tricksters yeah nothing comes for free so you better if it is for free then you are probably the product (laughs) yeah i mean um the thing is is facebook i mean let's face it you are the product on facebook the, the thing is, is that there is a framework mm. and there's a great power to that because if you understand the framework, then there's, a, you know, how do, how do esoteric reading systems like astrology, numerology work? It's all based off of the Saturn matrix, yeah. which is not a, necessarily a bad thing. This 3D world was constructed for us to be in, but, you know, there are so-called spiritual laws. A plus B equals C. 
And so, you know, we're just in a time where the many people are entering this and starting to figure this out. I, I don't know how many times I've been through this, but obviously I think I have some sort of, uh, you know, it's not the first time around. It's, it's not my first barbecue, as they say, you know. So yeah. I, I already kind of had a sense and I had to, I had to work out a lot of karma, but now in the last like five plus years, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy just doing the work I'm doing now and that's where I am today. Yeah. Yeah. The portal openers, they drive me nuts when, <laughs> when they are getting so hyped up. Oh, we're going to open a portal. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, uh, well, well, I, you, I, do, I, you do not even know what is coming through there, let alone yeah. controlling it. That's a joke. Well, if you've ever seen the movie uh, Constantine with Keanu Reeves, mm -hmm. that, that's literally where we are today. And you may not see, basically, heaven and hell are opened up, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going both ways. Uh, but you may not see, like, literal demonic things flying in the air. But you can see it in the people. You can see it working through people, how strange people are acting, you know? And again, there's great things that are happening. There's great healers out there. There are people that are really transforming their lives in a positive sense, but you're having the other side too. I think it's undeniable. So it, it's kind of interesting. You're having this complete, this complete opposition, right? These, these two things happening. Uh, but if, you know, we mentioned this earlier, if you keep your energy strong, and it's really based on you, it, it's your free will, whether you let these uh, Wi-Fi frequencies, 5G, totally fry your body, or you say, you know what, I disagree with that and I'm gonna start using some simple mm -hmm. tools. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's really, again, Aquarian Age, the power's in your hands now. So, you know. No more lousy really, excuses. <laughs> no more excuses, yeah. You guys, want, you guys wanted it, so, yeah. yeah. Mm. So many questions, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a word salad in my head. Yeah. Do you want to talk about some Buddhism or anything like that? No, because I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, ba ba basically, I would say this. There is only one story on the earth. Mm -hmm. So all traditions, uh, they all connect to the same story. Mm -hmm. You know, pe people think that oh, this one's better than another. Even if some are kind of more negative, I think there's some traditions, which I will not name, that mm -hmm. connect to dark magic. Even that is all connected to the same story. Yeah. You know? And I think we are at the time, we're close to the time of where we were in the past cycle of the flood. We're right before the flood. And I don't, I don't personally think that a, a big cataclysm is going to happen like before. But it's going to seem, it's going to get close to that point. It's, people are going to think the world is ending. But what we are really in, it's like a birth. It's a birth quake. It's like the mother when she's about to give birth. That's what we're in right now. Mm -hmm. um, and we're kind of in a thousand year turn. There's multiple cycles, but you could say the, the last one is maybe a thousand year turn. So to turn the ship from where I think we hit bottom to turn the ship, it's, it, it's like a shaking, you know? It's, it's a mm. great uh, change. So there's gonna be turbulence, just like a storm. Yeah. Do you think we will get a nice taste of as above, so below? It's, it's happening now in many ways. Mm -hmm. Like I said too, even though I think people like a Trump, they, <laughs> they, they're like a cartoon, mm -hmm. but you can look in many ways that, um, the people have manifested this in some way because uh, some things are so deep, so entrenched, only somebody like a Trump could bring it out, you know? And uh, I think it's also, it's also important for us, even though we may be smaller in number than the majority of the public, it doesn't take that much for spiritually strong people to 
to affect the space around them in a positive way. So, uh, you know, like I was saying, even when you deal with some of these tools like the Rife machine, right? A micro voltage of positive information could transform, could bring uh, your health back. So just making balanced positive affirmations in your space, like you, something as simple as you have a smile and you say hello to your neighbor, you talk to the people in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. that uplifts their vibe and then they pass it on like this. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yes. And when we manifest, regardless of doing it willingly or unwillingly, because we are manifesting all the time. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, our emotions have a lot to do with that. And right. they charge the entire process. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> if we are so easily triggered and right. Right, getting mad for every little thing, you know, then yeah, the outcome will not be the best. Well, uh, I think that it's a balance. You can't be completely logos logical mm -hmm. and you cannot be completely just uh, yeah. emotional triggered because that's what they say, right? The left has no brain and the right has no heart. <laughs> <They> say, <laughs> the conservatives tend to be very logical. They actually tend to know more fact wise. Mm -hmm. They've done their research and the left, they're more open hearted, but they haven't done any reading at all. It has to be somewhere in between. But I would say this. There's a great mystery about the human being. Because dogs know they're dogs. Cats mm -hmm. know that they are cats. But <laughs> what's a human? And the human is acting stranger and stranger these days. Yeah. It's because if you go back even as an archetype or it's true history, we kind of have a split schizophrenic uh, you know, constitution. Our makeup is somehow cracked. But this friction, like you're talking about, this schizophrenia of the human being, it creates a great polarity or energy. And psychic power or manifestation comes from emotional power. Yeah. So the, the more you can visualize things in your mind's eye, the more real, the more detailed, the more color, the more powerful the working, the psychic working the manifestation but the so i guess creative expression these kinds of things visualization is very important or it's a it's a key component of doing intuitive psychic work so-called clairvoyant work but the downside of that is a lot of people that are running on pure uh impulse they can be self-critical too self-critical or being too harsh, too hard on themselves. And this is something across the board that I see in the human race. The human race has a low self-esteem. So it's very important to take an honest assessment of who are we? What is, this is the question of religion or spirituality. This is basically two things. Who am I and why am I here, right? Yeah. Yeah. You start understanding this, it's going to help you a lot. And uh, this even this so-called low self-esteem even connects to the whole transhumanist AI. Because yeah. if you do not value or you do not understand what the human being really is, which is it's half material, it's half Saturn matrix, it's half physical, but it's also half energetic, right? So to, to really deal with uh, the human being, you have to understand it's it the it's two two halves, but most of the world right now is just focusing on the pure reductionist materialist satanic view of the material world mm. but and, and that's like limitation and scarcity it's the green agenda right mm. which we should all be more sustainable so called but there is an out it's the free energy. It's pulling from the source field. I've even done uh, experiments with uh, plants, 
I did it uh, with uh, some scalar imprinting, basically high energy, right? Mm -hmm. And I used, it was interesting too. I used a frequency, but later I looked at the frequency. It's the vibration of Jupiter, growth frequency, right? Jupiter, right? So I imprinted, uh, I had uh, tomato seeds. I, it was like one, one packet, I divided it into two groups. I imprinted the, the imprinted seeds for one hour with this Jupiter frequency. Mm -hmm. The control was not exposed. Same container, same pot, same soil, same water, same sunlight. In four or five weeks, the difference was like this. It was like four times growth. So how much money, what was the input? A couple pennies? Mm. It was basically free. So they're telling us, uh, you have to reduce your carbon footprint even in Sweden now. <laughs> they're saying, you may have to eat your grandmother to save the planet. Because <laughs> human flesh is the way that we're going to save humanity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. When actually, it's, it's all in here. The, the mainstream has not really opened up to the reality of the universe we live in. But we don't have to worry about them because the individuals on their own can start taking it upon themselves to, you know, in a fun way, start looking into these areas. You know, because I don't think... I don't think the mainstream will open up to this for a while, but individually we can start uplifting ourselves using, you know, simple tools to yeah. help ourselves. Mm. You know, even there, there's some I've seen here and there, there's some uh, censorship and restriction like on Etsy, eBay. Uh, you cannot talk about some of the positive effects of these. Mm hmm. And people are like, oh, they're trying to shut us down. Guess what? This is just a, 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 a sculpture. Mm -hmm. say it's, a, it's an art piece, right? Yeah. yeah. There's, there's no real way they can. Or are they going to say, you can't make pyramid shapes? No, of course not. <laughs> you, know? you, you, can't, you can't make a copper wire. You know? <laughs> it's like even uh, um, no matter how much they try to clamp down, you know, look at you know, people have been through tremendous things in like the, the communist era, Soviet era, uh, other things like that. And people still figured out a way to survive. So you just have to be smart about it, you know? Mm. Yeah. When you talked about the low self-esteem, I thought that it works so well with, ah, you need to ask, spirit guides or the aliens or you need to go here and there so that as you said there's always a middleman there, there there's never the realization it's within you it, it's not out there well i mean even uh you know some people you could take it as mythology or you could mm -hmm. take it as real history but even some of these progenitor gods and so forth, and they're saying, oh, the human beings are the slave race, well, so and forth. Well, guess what? At some level, we are them and they are us mm -hmm. because there is some kind of karmic contact. So the master becomes the slave and the slave becomes the master. Somehow we are intertwined, even at that level. And the, the, the old uh, Slavs and Nordics and other traditions, they did not see these so-called gods as aliens. They saw them as familiars. They were probably the noble class, but they were basically bloodline descendants. So they saw that kind of connection rather than the externalization, you know? And there was probably good aspects and bad aspects, but, you know, everything is mirrored. Everything is in yourself, even the so-called enemy, you know? that is part of you. Everything's a reflection of you. And that doesn't mean that you should allow yourself to be run over. You have to have certain boundaries, mm. but you have to also realize again, that the whole triggering and just the out of control, emotional rage and so forth. You have to ask yourself, why do you feel that way? So some of it I think is, is just due to the, the health factors today. 
especially the younger people, who have been hammered with pesticides mm. and GMO, which what? It destroys your gut, right? And what's the gut? Second chakra. What is second, second chakra control or uh, what's connected? It's uh, emotions, creativity, sexuality. Mm. And what is getting, you know, no judgment against anybody, but what are all the issues that are around today? It's like sexual gender fluidity, uh, the social justice warrior. I'm triggered, which is interesting because a trigger is a word they use in mind control, right? Right. I'm triggered, right? Mm -hmm. So they're off balance. I kind of believe this is prob some part of it, I think, is due to the diet and environmental factors. Mm. Do you think we will step into a time where, let's say we will have more, where, where it will become more apparent that beca because the gates are open that, you know, demons, spirits, or the, call it whatever, that they are going in and out and we will have some form of interface? You know, it's hard to say, but I think that it's, number one, it's important, like we said before, to start doing your own work. And then based off of that, people probably will get met. I mean, I'm not saying totally cut off any messages get because because you know, strong lineages or bloodlines, I'm sure that you have guides and so forth. But there's a difference between that and letting someone else, it, it's about being sovereign, right? Everything that uh, is talked about in, um, you know, relationship counseling and self-help about codependency, mm -hmm. you can totally overlay that or apply that to the metaphysical. Because let's say that uh, a couple, boyfriend, girlfriend, right? There's some domestic thing and they're getting beat by the other person. Mm -hmm. What do you think's happening on the metaphysical level with people that are starting to contact these entities? Mm -hmm. Now you're getting your butt whooped on a whole other level, on the spiritual level, which could be more serious, I think, in some ways. But you're not going to see it a lot of times externally but it's happening inside the people, you know? So again, it's important to have certain boundaries, you know, even the cells on our body, they have a cell wall to, to regulate the, the intake and outtake of nutrients and, and things like that. Right. There's nothing wrong about having certain boundaries, especially people like us that, you know, um, I do basically some counseling. I do, uh, you know, I advise people, I do readings, even, even that, that kind of type where people come to us and they want to talk. I have to say, you know, if it, if, cause there's, there's many, many people that contact me, if it's more than five minutes, I have to say, Hey, uh, if you want to talk more, we can do a session and so forth just for my time. But if I didn't regulate that, I'm going to be online all day, you know? So, uh, <laughs> it's just a fact of life that, you know, you could, you could reduce it to this yin yang balance, right? It has to be balanced. You can actually reduce a lot of these things down to balance, whether it's the energetics of the Wi-Fi and so forth, uh, your health, um, interfacing, talking with people, uh, these kinds of things and manifestation too. You, you can do almost anything. But just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something because understand there's a, there's a logical A plus B equals C. And if you do something, I always advise people because some of my products, they, they are used to boost manifestation and so forth. Mm -hmm. Say if you're using, uh, you know, radionics and so forth, you know, I always tell people do it in the highest good. Don't, don't do it so-called selfishly yeah and um, don't mm -hmm. try to manipulate people yeah y usually the, the so-called black magic oh yeah is are people that feel weak 
and they do not feel confident to do what they want to do on their own power. So they're trying to get some kind of leverage from an external source or shortcuts, you know? Um, I don't consider so-called using a power pyramid, if you're doing manifestation, a shortcut. It's just an acceleration. A shortcut is where you're trying to do something you don't feel capable of doing in any other way, mm. you know? Uh, but, but guess what? Again, nothing comes for free, right? There's a payment in some way. So, you know, I, even when I'm using radionics or uh, pyramid and so forth, I don't see it as a magic tool to do what I want to do. I see it as part of a meditation. So I could just use a pen and paper and write a positive affirmation. But when I combine it with very various tools, even if you have a quartz crystal, which is an amplifier, right? It's just boosting what you already have. That's a different view than the, the more archontic view. Yeah. 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 The archons. <laughs> yeah. Well, somebody, somebody, it's, you know, they say all the world's a stage. It's all uh, mm -hmm. a production. So somebody has to play the bad guy. Otherwise, the story would be boring, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People better get their popcorn because we're entering basically the last phase mm. of this particular timeline we've been on. You know. Will you be a spectator or an actor? Oh, well, I'm an actor right now because mm -hmm. I'm actively, you know, I, I feel I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the only thing I need to do is not work so much. I have a lot of Capricorn energy, so. Mm. And then Taurus and Capricorn, right? So, in Scorpio, <laughs> very intense, you know. But I think I just need to exercise more, probably, maybe eat better. But mm. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm I'm working on my energy tools, I'm talking to people, and um, I stand on the shoulders of many other teachers. But now I'm starting. I think I've been in it long enough. I mean, I was doing this. I'm turning 42 this year, so. I've been into this material probably my whole life, but actively probably 20 years or something like that. Mm. And I'm starting to come to a place where, you know, cause I don't put myself out there as like a, a teacher, even though I have done classes and taught people because in my mind, there were so many people that I learned from, but yeah. now I'm starting to come to a place where people are like, wow, how do you know all this stuff? And I'm thinking, well, be interested in this thing for 10 or 20 years and you're going to be a <laughs> you're gonna be too at some point you know and you all, all the weird stuff <laughs> all the weird stuff that you know yeah. didn't make sense well this is the thing too people i think naturally there's a lot of people that have always had the interest mm. but it didn't seem to have a practical application at the time yeah. and now you're starting to see the relevance of your interest because there's, you know, even the Christians say the separation of the wheat and the chaff, you mm. know, the, the, they say there's a separation of the society happening. And it's only the people that had the eye to see that had the investment that are able now to read because the Aquarian age, uh, like I was mentioning before, it's not so obvious. It's levels and it's the so-called the color revolution. It's the hybrid war. It's even the realm of psychic warfare, right? This is all invisible in the air. But a lot of us now can see what's happening when the average person in the public literally cannot see, even if you laid it out logically, they can't see what you're seeing. And this is another thing. The more that you use these energy tools, you actually start to go to another bandwidth. Mm. And now you are starting to see things that were always there, you just didn't, you just weren't open to it at, at some level. And also, this is another thing, because we were talking about archons, right? Yeah. I think a superior way to move forward is not the the hand-to-hand -hand combat, but you become invisible. You you go to another bandwidth, and then the darker energies cannot touch you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Even in 3D, I'm not saying I'm capable of, you know, cloaking myself. Right. But I know if I do not want to be seen, 
Right. You can do that. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? I've done this in Brazil. Okay. Uh, it's it, it, it's not like you're you're visually invisible, but if you meld in the crowd, you become invisible. Yeah. You know, if if you conduct your energy in a way that's not obvious, mm. In that way, you can become invisible. There's some other techniques too, but I've done that in Brazil. Because, you know, in, in I go to Sao Paulo a lot, mm. and there are a lot of Japanese uh, descendants there. You know, the number one colony of Japanese outside Japan is actually Brazil. Yeah. So it, this this face is actually like local in Sao Paulo. You know? mm. Yeah. yeah, I get that a lot. Judith, it's not possible to hide with you and your red hair. <laughs> yeah. And then I say, watch me. <laughs> Has yeah. nothing to do with your hair color or anything. Yeah. Do you have a daily routine that you are very happy with that you are benefiting from? Well, I've this year I'm still working more than I would like to. I mean, as far as like um it is very physical because most people if they have a business it's not handmade. Basically all my things are very boutique, you know. Mm -hmm. They they say, "Oh, we sell like t-shirts, so let's order more." When I get the order, I have to make everything <laughs> A lot of the things are not even in stock, in stock, like some of the pendants, they're in stock, but if it's like a large pyramid, it's made to order. So it's almost like, uh, like if it was like clothing, I'm harvesting the cotton and then I'm weaving it and I'm printing the shirt, you know? Uh, but I have worked smarter now. I'm not for five years. I offered basic pyramids. Now, uh, I might do it for Christmas. I might offer them again just for that time, but I went more high end, you know, I specialize the, the pyramids that I'm doing right now. Uh, there's many people out there, but the way that I'm doing it, it's proprietary to me, you know? Uh, so as far as schedule, uh, I work at night during the daytime. I ship orders. Mm. I handle emails. I do readings, but then, you know, I am in Los Angeles. You sleep? I I cast at night because it's hot right now here in Los Angeles too. Mm. So the resin, uh, it's more easily co to control the temperature at night here. Mm. And, you know, it may have to do something with Scorpio's all underworld, right? So I work at nighttime. Mm. So, um, yeah, I don't get too crazy now, but there was sometimes I'm on some very large YouTube shows. And then I will just take all orders. And then I'm literally work. I did a couple don't do this people, but I worked like till 6 a.m. two days in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think only Japanese and Germans are this crazy, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to be more balanced, but I'm dealing with Scorpio energy, Capricorn energy, and Taurus energy. So, mm. yeah. Masaki, do you have an, any idea how long we have been talking? Because Zoom is not showing me anything. I think, let's see, we started at one, probably over an hour and a half, I think. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. It's not that I, uh... <laughs> so. Time doesn't exist. We're in yes, the. Yes, I know. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> um, and you're right. Yeah. It's, uh, it does not exist, but. Um... But you you brought up a lot of uh, great topics, so um, I don't think all of them I've I've talked about them, you know, other shows. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. But uh, I knew that I have the right partner to you know mm -hmm. to talk about this <clears throat> because um, I've been following your work for quite a while. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> All right. Even if you do not hear from people. So, yeah. so you, you, you do, uh, you seem to do or, you know, have been versed in a lot of different things. So do you, 
do you do any kind of uh, affirmations or manifestation work or anything like that? Or would you be interested in that? Affirmations? No, I, I don't do that. Um, okay. What was the other thing you said? Uh, any kind of, you know, there, there's a range, but it could be like affirmations, manifestation, healing work, that, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I, I, healing work, yes. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll send you some tools then because some like a pendant you can wear, but I have some gold plated rings that you can place on an intention, but okay. it could also be used for remote healing. Also, it will boost. You know. At Mazaki, the shipping costs will be insane. No, no. These are light. These are, oh, okay. these are some of the tensor tools, so I could send it to you easily. Okay. So I, okay. I have quite a few clients. Uh, I've sent things to Germany and England and even Africa. The one place where I don't get a lot of orders is Asia. Because I think. What is that, huh? The East Asians are very like, uh, well, they say East Asians are ruled by Capricorn. Mm -hmm. So um, I think unless they see a. Uh, some kind of financial, you know, just like Chinese lucky, right? Fortune. So <laughs> all the Chinese reading systems are like very practical, right? Mm. But uh, it's starting to grow. But as far as the mainstream interest, it's it's a lot of the Western countries. I get some from I get uh, orders from India too. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of places uh, where the actually the Vedic culture was worldwide, but it's mainly people when they think of Vedic culture is basically like Hindu, right? But mm -hmm. I think you know that maybe 1,000 years ago, that was one of the last days of when the so-called Europeans had, were connected to the Vedism. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Even these days, if you look at, you know, an Indian, the uh -huh. features are the same as the European features. It's just darker skin. Well, and then, you know, Vedism, it means truth. So mm -hmm. anybody can be a Vedic. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, and it's kind of, I don't know if it's strange, but I, I've, maybe my focus has shifted because my parents, they grew up in Los Angeles, uh, 1960s and we had sort of a, a Black Panthers, that sort of like a ethnic minority cultural movement, right? Mm -hmm. So I grew up in that environment, but I knew everything kind of around that because I grew up around it. But now I'm shifting more. My, there's a great mystery about what is the white race? <laughs> what is the white man? And, it, you know, also it connects to the Buddhism, I think, too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all have a role to play. All our astrological science is like, the signs of the zodiac, right? Mm -hmm. You have the Asiatic, you have the the African or black, you have white, and you know, probably Latin is a, a mixture. I'm mm -hmm. not saying one's better than the other, but I think it's highly significant. I think you know too that that I think that there's deep occult reasons for the replacement and the the themes of the migration that have been going on in Europe. You know, you know, the supposedly white race is ruled by Aries, which is the most fiery sign, right? Mm. Loves its freedom, does not like to be told what to do. Mm. On the far end, it could be racist because, you know, excluding, you know, freedom to the exclusion of other people is racism. But I think that it should be considered <laughs> that the uh, stereotype of that old Viking or here in the U.S., that old redneck with his gun wants his freedom i think that's what the global control structure is really afraid of so if you can if you can contain or or you know uh suppress the white people who all who do tend to live in the more modernized countries right so mm -hmm. they would tend to have more option a lot of people in the the belping countries they're they're like on a survival level so mm -hmm. they don't they're just thinking about that. They're not thinking about these other considerations. I think that's an occult, or you look at the astrological signs as a type, you know. I think a lot of people around, around the world, if, if no matter what background, you can have the sentiment. But as a generality, this could be an occult reason 
of the so-called white replacement, you know, because mm. you you guys would be, you know, when that old Viking he gets that fire, you better you better watch out. <laughs> might might take out all the bankers. I'm just saying. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I know what you mean. I mean, me with my double fire, Sagittarius and Aries, yeah. I'm so happy to have the moon in Libra. <laughs> yeah, it's probably boosted this year with the uh, Jupiter and Sagittarius transit, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, because I know that you do um, numero numerology. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my life path number is five. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's that's not a, that I do It's a fun one. It's a fun one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but uh, I will exploit you a little bit. Tell me a little bit about number five. Okay. So uh, life path, it, life path and the birthday, those mm -hmm. are the majority of the chart, 60%. Life path is like 40%. So life path, in that position, it's the major challenge in the lifetime. It is a big part of the personality, but in being a part of the personality, it also contains the greatest challenge because if you're strong in one direction, it's naturally weak in the other direction, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the standard numbers in the Pythagorean numerology is one to nine. Mm -hmm. So one would be sort of like the baby. It'd be kind of like the Aries. The manifester it's also like alpha right mm -hmm. out in the front nine is the old man right so one to nine where's five right in the middle right so it does everything before mm -hmm. and everything after so it's the juggler right mm -hmm. uh you could probably call this uh mercury energy it's very mutable mm -hmm. probably more connected to virgo than gemini because mm -hmm. it, it's very mutable quick on its feet, quick learner. But we have this saying, jack of all trades and master of none. <laughs> so because it's so formless and mutable, it lacks the structure, right? Mm -hmm. So I have a five in my chart, but it's not as prominent. It's lower in the chart. Mm -hmm. So I find myself doing five different things and walking across the room like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, got to do that. So I, I would say the probably, you know, because life path is a challenge. Mm. It's the direction. Yeah. So if with this kind of energy, the key is to have some kind of structure. No, it doesn't have to be planned out to the minute, but let's say like a quarterly goal or by the end of this year, let's do this. So then you have that Saturn progression of, you know, the, the so-called bricklaying, putting the foundation in. Hmm. which can be boring. Saturn is not exciting, but <laughs> if you're here, 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 it's sort of what we call one off, right? There are a, a series of unconnected events, which could be very fun. But then at the end of a few years or say five or 10 years, if you didn't have that progression, you end up at the same place you were. Hmm. Right. Hmm. So that, that, that's the, that's the life path five. My birthday number is seven. Neptune Pisces energy so but but it's also the mo it's one of the more so-called intelligent numbers as far as intellectual because seven is it's like the image of Rodin's thinking man it's the thinker so it can span everything from technical logical science all the way to abstract metaphysics mm. but the connector is it's the thinker mm. um so you are so-called smarter than the average bear because it's the thinker, you know? Mm. Uh, so the birthday seven, the birthday, the day of the month, it's an indicator of the special skill the person has to assist in the life path. So I would say what you're doing now completely fits this because uh, you have the skill of knowing the material, right? But you are doing it through f number five is also connected to, uh, it's basically freedom and change. Mm. 
it's not stuck in doing the same repetitive task mm -hmm. over and over. It's uh, connected to travel, but we are doing virtual travel right now, right? Through I traveled on my life. I was a flight attendant. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So <laughs> it, it, say if you're working in the airline industry, mm -hmm. you get uh, element of change, but it's within a structure. This is, this is the good combination because the career can develop, yet you're not bored because you're always dealing with different people, but it's within a certain structure. Mm. Doing a YouTube show, it's another version of this where you can build your show, but it's always a little different, different guests and so forth, but it's within a certain structure. Yeah. There you go. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Masaki, I think we uh, covered a lot of ground today. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. You got yeah. me. You got me. Got me thinking. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you come back. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, guys, go to akaida.com. I will also link your YouTube channel. And um, yeah. Check Masaki out. He's there to assist, to help. Uh, I have a Instagram too, where I post a lot of the new pyramids. And okay. it's, it's my name, Masaki underscore one. It's a O N E Masaki underscore one. Okay. On Instagram. Great. So the two of us, we say goodbye. Until next yeah. time, take good care of yourselves. Bye bye.